Yo, what's up, my fellow artists? It's been too long, as always, um, but we're going to have a video coming out of where we've been and kind of what we've been up to the last couple months. But in the meantime, I wanted to dive into how you can go about drawing and recreating scales and this one specifically scales on a snake so let's jump into it <laughs> So for this one, we're going to be using a HB graphite pencil, a variety of different smudger sizes. Yes. And then we're also going to be using a Pentel Click eraser, a Mono Zero eraser, and an Ahuhu eraser. We're also going to be using soft, medium, and hard charcoals. And last but not least, the brush. Okay. So we have our reference image in the corner. One of the things that I like to do is I like to identify the main lines in the image that I am drawing. So in this case, that is going to be the mouth of this snake. When it comes to your outlines, you can approach them multiple ways. But for me, I like to identify the major lines within the image such as the mouth, and then I like to draw out the boundaries of the image. So I'll draw out the bottom of the chin, and then the nose, and the top of the nose, and the top of the eye as well. And for snakes, um, unlike other animals, um, they have scales. Scales are kind of unique in that they lay on top of each other. So when you're drawing out your outlines, be sure to keep that in mind. Now for this snake, this snake has a variety of different scales. The scales behind the eyes you can see are much bigger and actually do lay on top of one another. And then as we move closer to the snout of this snake, those scales don't lay on each other so much. So that's something to keep in mind. One of the things that I always say is that your outline does not need to be perfect. In fact, a lot of first time drawers will get frustrated because their outline isn't exactly like their reference image. But the biggest thing is just to do the best that you can. I'm a big proponent of not drawing something exactly as your reference image is. If you were able to draw it exactly like it is every time, um, you might as well be a photographer. Um, but that's just my personal preference on it. When it comes to your outlines, do your best. That's why we have three different types of erasers. It's because nothing that you lay down in your outline um, needs to be permanent unless you're happy with it and you want it to be permanent. Just focus on each individual scale and uh, give it your best effort. And one of the things that you'll find is as you draw out each individual scale, the entire piece itself will come together for you. All right, so now that the outline's done, the next step is taking our soft charcoal and grinding it onto our sandpaper strip here, along with our medium charcoal and a little bit of hard charcoal. This is that three-layered method that we like to utilize here on this channel. And I'm gonna take a number two smudger and I'm gonna smudge on some soft charcoal. And the reason why I'm using soft charcoal is because it has the least amount of binder in it when compared to the medium and the hard charcoals. And because of that, it allows us to lay down a really nice light base shade um, when compared to the medium and the hard charcoals. Those other two will lay down darker shades because the charcoal is infused with more binder than the soft charcoal. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we are going to look at our reference image and essentially what we're doing is we're identifying the, the darker shades. Um, I'm a big fan of using complete white space 
when it comes to um, the lighter shades in my drawings. And the reason why is because complete white space, as opposed to its exact opposite, which of course is pure black, like say the um, middle of the eye on that reference image in the corner, you get a full scale of your values from light to dark tones. What I want you to pull from this is I want you to see that I am only concerned with my lightest shades, my lightest dark shades, if that makes sense. If you look at the scales on the reference image, you can see that the bottom half of these scales are darker than the top half of these scales. So what we're doing is we're going in and we are bulking up each individual scale. Now we've already identified the boundaries with our outline and those can be changed. The big thing to take away from this part of it is just worry about your light shades. And as you can see we're shading and essentially we're drawing all of this with a smudger. We're not even using a charcoal pencil. That will come later when we use a medium or a dark pencil for our outlines and our detail work. I'll take my mono zero eraser here and I'll erase this. And this is what I mean by your outline doesn't need to be perfect. If you see something or if you come across something in your drawing that doesn't quite add up like you want it to for your reference image, hit it with a mono zero or hit it, hit it with any eraser. Here, as you can see, I need to beef up a scale that I want. So I'm just gonna grab my graphite pencil real quick, draw out the outline, and now I'm gonna lay down some, some soft charcoal and boom, there's a scale. Another big thing when it comes to scale work is keeping in mind the contour. Now, if you have a round scale, be sure that when you go to Put your smudger to paper that if it's round that you do a rounded motion if it's a flatter look then run your smudger flat you have a lot of power with charcoal and it's just something to be aware of if you stand the smudger up on end you can give the bottom of these scales here along the mouth a really nice rounded look by darking up the bottom of the scale while you leave the center of the scale white, then you bring charcoal onto the top of the scale and that will give it a nice rounded look. Essentially what you're doing is you're tricking the eye into thinking that something is round when in all actual reality it's flat, but because of the way you manipulated the charcoal when you laid it down, it appears rounded. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit smaller of a smudger and we're going to go in here and we're going to continue to build the shades on these scales with some medium charcoal. Now remember how I said the medium charcoal has more binder in it? Well because of that it tends to hold together more than soft charcoal and that's perfect because what we are doing is we are laying that medium charcoal which is darker on top of the lighter shades that we already laid down. And what that does is that gives us value in our shades. And thus, that gives us dimension. So it's bing bada boom. You know, there you go. But the biggest thing with building your shades is understanding how to build them. Here I'm gonna take a hard charcoal and this is where the magic really happens with this technique. We've laid down our soft charcoal, we've laid down our medium charcoal, and now we're laying down our hard charcoal. Now, with this, what I like to do is I like to, I'm essentially lining out each one of these scales. And when I line it out, what that does is that gives it even more dimension. It, it, makes, it makes it look heavier, if you will. And the cool thing about this, given this specific reference image, is when you're lining out the scales, you can really make them appear as if they are laying on top of each other. And I would recommend 
doing the three layered method in sections of your drawing because I wouldn't have wanted to hit this drawing from the very back scale all the way to the front of the nose with my soft and my medium charcoals because then because I'm right-handed I would be reaching over um, charcoal that I had already laid down and I could risk smudging my drawing and we don't want that so you want to make your pencils and your charcoal work for you and so this is the best way that I've identified that works well um, it'll be less stress for you as the artist and your drawing will benefit from it so now as you can see we're doing the exact same thing that we did behind the eye in front of the eye and below the eye here on these lighter scales along the mouth we are hitting it with some soft charcoal we're hitting the bottom we're sticking to the contours over the center so that it gives it that nice rounded look and we are being conscious of our white space as well um, as you can see with these smaller scales here a good trick that you can use is don't smudge out and darken the entire scale darken just the center of the scale and you'll see how this will really make each individual scale pop when we go to line it out with our hard charcoals but just like with the scales behind the eye we are continuing to build the value in these scales with our smudger work, with our uh, soft charcoals. Now here what we're gonna do is we're going to lay down some medium charcoal and we are going to start to add some dimension and some roundness to this eye. As you can see, this eye is the only thing that is somewhat round in this reference image. And so this is all smudger work. The pencils, when it comes to the eye on this specific drawing, will come later when we go to beef up the value in the center of the eye, along with the blood vessels um, in the eye as well. But here we're going to take a medium charcoal and we're just going to beef this up a little bit. And what we're going to do is I'm going to line out the scales. And this is the magic part. This is where you really start to see the value and the scales really start to jump off the paper for you. But the biggest thing is just to go slow. Take your time. So many things in life that we do, we have to rush, rush, rush through it. But with drawing, it's completely up to you. And I like to go slow. I like to take my time. I like to really focus on the art that I'm doing. Because for me, it's very much a meditative type thing. And I'm sure anyone that draws enough can, uh, can agree with that. But with this one, I'm, I'm kind of rushing through. Most of the drawings that I do, um, on average, take me anywhere from 14 to 16 uh, actual chair hours uh, to complete. Um, with this drawing, what I'm trying to convey to you is the um, basic principles of the technique um, that I use. Um, this wasn't a technique that I was taught, but rather I kind of um, more or less stumbled across just drawing and I always really enjoyed charcoal because it just came uh, very naturally to me. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take my favorite brush and we're going to dab on some soft charcoal here. And with very, very light applications, you'll find that the smudgers will be a little bit too harsh. And so because of that, uh, a good workaround is to utilize the brush. And as you can see, that added some really nice dimension to our eye. And then we're gonna take the Mono Zero Eraser, we're gonna clean up the mouth here. And now we're gonna take our hard charcoal and we are going to beef up these scales. And we are going to make these bad boys pop. And with adding line work, just 
just go nice and slow. Um, be very um, deliberate though. When you go to lay down that line, um, the smoother your line can be, um, the more believable that line will appear to someone who is viewing your art. But we're just gonna go through and we're gonna line out all these. Here's the nostril, I'm just gonna punch that in. Boom, done. And as you draw more and more, you'll get more comfortable um, with this technique. And when it comes time to hash out those lines, you can do that. So here we're gonna take the Ahuhu eraser. I went overboard on a line here. We're just gonna punch that out. Boom, done. Just don't be afraid of making mistakes. I make mistakes in just about every drawing that I do, but they are easily corrected with uh, the right eraser. So always keep that in mind. So now that we've lined those all out, we're going to continue the exact same steps. We are taking our smudgers and we're just starting from the bottom here and we're, we're using an upward stroke and we're putting a nice curve on it as we pull that smudger upward. And this gives that scale, that, that rounded look. But that's the big thing. Always keep your contours in mind and lay less charcoal down because you can always lay down more. And that's a big thing. I always say it's just like cutting hair. If you add too much charcoal, sometimes it's hard to take it away. So always add a little bit because you can always add more. Just like when you cut hair, if you cut too much off, it's really hard to put it back on. The principle is the same. So just keep that in mind. But we're just going to go through and we're going to continue to build up these scales. We're going to keep white space in between those scales. Now we're going to take a medium charcoal here. We're going to go through and we're going to line these scales out so that they pop for us. And the line work is what makes or breaks the scale. This, now the, the shading, of course, is, is paramount as well. But the line work is really where you get your separation from scale to scale. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to beef up the mouth line here, where the upper jaw and the lower jaw come together. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take some soft charcoal. And I'm just gonna go back through spots that I've already hit with it. Um, I initially went very light um, with the, my pressure control and my smudger. Um, and so what I'm doing now is I'm pushing a little harder and I'm um, adding to the value on these scales and the shades of them. Beefing them up, just making them a little bit darker. Um, this will also add um, individual value to each scale because I already laid down soft um, charcoal um, initially very lightly um, by pushing harder it adds a darker shade um, thus increasing the value of each individual scale and and you can play around with this um, I'm just kind of showing you um, the basics for how you can add individual value um, to each scale um, and like I said before I'm also going uh, very quickly um, on this tutorial Usually I would be going a lot slower, um, but this is just uh, meant to be a guide for you um, as a beginning artist so that you can see um, how um, it's done. And it'll be um, up to you with your individual drawings um, to uh, perfect it and bring it um, to the level that um, you want your own unique drawing to be at. But as you can see by doing this, um, it makes each individual scale um, darker. And here by adding um, more medium charcoal on top of that soft charcoal that we just laid down, you can definitely see the increase in value from um, pure white on the boundaries of the scale to um, very rich darks. And this is where um, the realism in the scales really comes out. The more value you add 
as long as you are conscious of your white space. Typically, the more realistic something will look. And depending on the kind of look that you're going for, uh, the more round a scale will look or you know, the sharper a scale will look. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take a hard charcoal. We're gonna stand this pencil up on end and we are going to make tiny little zigzag strokes. We're gonna be very light with it. And this is going to give us the blood vessels in this snake's eye. Now this is something that um, takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, it's very easy to go overboard um, on the eye. But then what we're going to do here is we're going to take that brush and we're just going to uh, beef up the um, shadows in this eye. And what this is doing is this is going to really make that eye look round and uh, play true to what the reference image looks like uh, in this specific drawing for us. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take that brush and I'm just going to hit all of these scales and this is going to smooth out all of the values in our scales. It's going to give us a nice gradation across um, our blends and really make the snake's scales look nice and smooth like they do in the reference image. So now for the bottom jaw, as you can see the bottom jaw is uh, a little bit softer and not nearly as defined as the top of the head is on this specific image. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through and we're just going to pick out roughly where these scales are. We're going to define the bottom of the snake's jaw. And this is all smudger work, just like we did with the top of the jaw, defining all those scales initially. We don't use a pencil. We're just going to utilize our smudger. And this is kind of a cool trick. If you take these lines and you pull it from the center to that jaw line, and that, make, that gives it a nice rounded but yet flat look. Then we're going to take our mono zero eraser and we're going to define the bottom of the jaw. And then we're going to take the brush. We're going to grab some soft charcoal. And here what we're doing is we're just um, starting to build um, the values for our individual scales on the bottom jaw. We already know based off of the reference image that the bottom of the jaw is going to be uh, much darker than the top. And uh, because of that, using the brush instead of the smudger is going to help us with our gradation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Mono Zero Eraser. And this is that really nice technique that I call adding by subtracting or adding detail by taking charcoal away. The Mono Zero Eraser is a must. If you don't have this eraser in your toolkit, I highly recommend it. And here you can see why. You can get into really nice tight spaces. What I'm doing is I'm hitting the outside of each individual scale and that is just adding to the dimension of that scale. Here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a bigger smudger and I'm going to grab some medium charcoal and I'm just going to roughly hit um, these scales. I'm going to beef them up. Slight pressure here and there. It's not a constant pressure. And what this is doing is this is just darkening up the bottom of the jaw. And this will help give us that really nice separation in the shades from the top of the head to the bottom of the jaw. And then I'll go ahead and I'm going to blend this all together and soften it up with our brush. Then I'm going to take some medium charcoal. And I'm going to go through and I'm just, this is just for darkening. If you look at the reference image, the front nose of the snake is dark, and then that shadow casts and follows the bottom of the jaw. So now I'm going to take my Mono Zero Eraser here, and I'm just going to jump back up to the top. I'm going to define these scales. And this, more or less, is just detail work. Now, you can spend hours with a Mono Zero Eraser in your hand, 
adding detail work just like this. But of course, we're a little strapped for time in this video, so I, I can't do the drawing justice like I would like to if I was drawing this, say, for a client. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hard charcoal and I'm just going to line out and define that bottom jaw. Here, I don't like that, so I'm going to take my monozo eraser and I'm going to clean it up a little bit so I can get that line where I want it. There we go, it's much nicer, so now when I lay down my line, there we are. It's nice and sharp, that's what I like. So then I'm gonna take my hard charcoal again, and I'm going to go in and out with the hard charcoal, you can do detail work, much like you did with the Mono Zero Eraser where you were highlighting your white values. You can accentuate your dark values with a hard or even a medium pencil, but this is essentially adding uh, individual texture to each scale. Um, this is a personal preference. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is just a way that I have found where I can get almost like a nice gritty texture, especially on something like a, a snake. Even though the scales are smooth, they do still very much have kind of their own unique texture. And so by taking a hard charcoal or a medium charcoal and applying it in this way, you can see how it kind of adds um, to that texture within the drawing. Um, and texture is very important. I have texture on top of the scales, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a brush. That's going to soften it up, but at the same time, it's not going to completely take away what I just put down with my hard uh, charcoal. And like I said, detail work is something that you can add as much or as little detail to your drawing um, as you wish. It just really depends on exactly what kind of aesthetic look you are uh, going for. But here, even though I touched all these up with my Mono Zero Eraser, now what I'm doing is I'm running my hard line along the white line that I created with my Mono Zero Eraser. And this, that just, this just adds some nice dimension to the scales. And here what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm just highlighting each individual scale by lining it out. I'm making sure that I'm going uh, a little bit lighter than I did on the top. I'm not going to push nearly as hard. And then here, this is another technique you can do. You can lay your charcoal, your hard charcoal, nice and flat. And you can follow the contour of your scale. And this just adds um, some nice... Uh, detail work and it and it adds to texture that's that's what we're doing here is we're building that texture and this will just add to the realistic look of your drawing and then I'm going to take a mono zero eraser and I'm just going to highlight this that adding by taking away but yeah guys that's pretty much it for this one um, if you have any questions definitely uh, comment below and I'll try my best to answer them So that is it, voila. So that is how I go about drawing scales on snakes and reptiles. Um, I hope it was helpful for you guys. I hope you were able to pick one or two things up from this video um, because that's what drawing is all about. You know, it's all about just growing and learning from each individual piece that you create so that your next piece can be that much better. So that is it. That is all I got for you guys this week. And remember, if you guys enjoyed this video and you find yourself enjoying all the videos that we create here at Messer Creations, you should uh, probably like and be sure to subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to hit the bell when you subscribe. Ding! <laughs> so you guys can be notified when our latest and greatest videos come out. My name is Brayden, and you guys have just been tipped off. I hope you guys had fun, and I will see you in the next one.